Welcome to the build part seven. When we left off, our two pulleys were not in alignment. So what I did is bought aftermarket pulleys that had some spacing, but oh no, they don't line up. Now they're uh, out of alignment in a different direction. So what I did under Bruce's direction is to go get a spacer. But oh no, it's too long. So we take the spacer to a bandsaw and cut it down to size. And then I took it to a sander to smooth it out. But oh no, I cut crooked. So Bruce comes to my rescue and this is the wonderful thing about Bruce Hens Garage is it has a lot of the old machining tools that you may not use all the time, but when you need them, oh do you need them. He's able to cut the spacer true and he gives me directions how to make it better. But oh no, the spacer doesn't slide on the spindle far enough but there's enough left that Bruce is able to cut down the spindle just enough so the spacer can slide on. Under Bruce's direction, I mark the high point of the spacer, and what I do is I use a digital caliper to measure each side of the spacer in, in millimeters. And we're down to hundredths of a millimeter. He instructs me how to use a die grinder to ever so slowly shave off each side until it's exactly 11.1, I'm sorry, 11.01 .01 millimeters thick, all around. I put on the spacer with the new aftermarket water pump pulley. I spin it and hold my breath and look at that. No wobbles and it's in alignment. Bruce says the way you know pulleys are in alignment is to not look at the edges of the pulleys because they're a bit, the thickness is a little different. Look at the grooves on the pulley. When they line up, the pulleys are lined up. So thank goodness that part is done and thank you so much Bruce for showing me how to do this you're a great man now he teaches me how to grind the valve seats you remembered a few times before we were grinding valves now we do the opposite we grind the valve seats so they're clean and true this is a quick way grinding system and what this is is a grinder that fits on a spindle that is placed in the valve hole <laughs> your tool here is just an electric motor that sits on the grinder and spins it now the grinder bit is spring-loaded so you just gently tap it in. Not even tap, really press. Just press it in and it grinds just a little bit. And then you spin the tool on a cleaner. There's a little bit of steel on there that will clean off all the grime and the gook that gets on the grinder as you place it into the valve seats. And you just do this down the line. With the valve seats all ground down, now you lap in the valves. Lapping is what may happen naturally on an engine as the minute differences in the valves and the valve seats match up with each other. But Bruce shows us how you can do this ahead of time. You can get the process started. With a little bit of aggregate placed on the valves and a little wooden suction cup tool, you spin each valve in its individual valve seat so that already they're prepped for each other and you're going to get a perfect seal. Now it's time for artwork. I never powder coated before and this is going to be fun. I bought some Eastwood flat black and he shows me how to use a powder coater. First you preheat your parts so they're already warm and all you need is an old oven to do this. You attach the powder coating applicator to an air source. You attach an electrical lead to your frame and then you begin spraying. I apologize I don't know if I'm spraying positively charged powder or negatively charged powder but the surface to to be powder coated is charged oppositely so the powder instantly clings to whatever you're spraying it on and then you carefully take your parts put them back in the oven for about 15 minutes i think at 350 or 400 degrees and the powder bakes into the metal. You can't do suspension components in here because suspension components already have rubber in them. You would have to paint that. But anything that's just metal, all metal, nothing but metal, you can powder coat. Our one big cover there was an awkward size, so thank you so much, Will, for helping me lift it out of the oven and on back to the rack to dry. Oh yeah, remember the cylinder heads? We had lapped all the valves. Well, that creates a little bit of dust, so back into the cooker it goes to clean off all the gunk. From a video before, you saw that we now have an Edelbrock 2121 intake manifold and this comes from Speedway Motors so thank you Chad and thank you Speedway for this this has much bigger ports than our stock one and we're gonna match these ports directly to the head by using the manifold gasket as a guide so yes these are big ports but they're getting bigger I trace on the inside of the intake gasket and begin grinding and polishing them out we're starting to see the end of the light with this engine and once we get this engine done it'll be fast sailing from here because really our transmission is done that was done by Bart. All our suspension components are here. It's just a matter of putting in the engine and setting up the front suspension and then choosing wheels and tires. After that, we're done. So we're farther along than it looks. The timing cover gasket is sealed on both sides. 
Timing cover goes on. Water pump gasket goes on the timing cover, also sealed. Water pump goes on. The distributor comes out again. And now we begin taping off everything. The oil gasket is go goes on and then is sealed in its correct spots. The oil bracers go on. Tighten down all the bolts. Torque them to spec. More tape. Clean the surfaces with brake cleaner. I'm using self-etching primer on the engine. And then look at that. Ford Blue. This 1993 engine is starting to look period now. Painting is always that moment in a build where you know things are really coming together now. Thank you so much to Advance Auto for supplying all the parts that this engine needed to go together and to Speedway Motors for providing all the accessories. I can't give enough thanks to Bruce Hens Garage and the wonderful team that they have here for allowing us to work and learn how to work. Believe me, I do not feel worthy enough. Thank you so much. I hope you like watching part 7 and looking forward to part 8 in the coming weeks. Have a very good week.